Hi, this is Sherilyn Smith from the University of Washington. In this video, we're going to be talking about the differential diagnosis of vesicular or blistering rashes. Creating a differential diagnosis is an important part of clinical care to help you most effectively diagnose and treat your patients. This is the learning objective to develop an appropriate differential diagnosis for vesicular rashes. So when your patient develops a rash, you should think of several different causes before deciding what the most likely etiology is. As I outlined previously, varicella is just one cause of a vesicular or blistering rash, but there are other types of problems that can look very similar. I'd like to define some commonly used terms to describe rashes. A papule, as shown here, is a solid raised rash that's less than a centimeter in size. It can be many different colors. A plaque is similar to a papule, but larger. In contrast, a macule is a change in skin color without change in the thickness or texture of the skin. You can't feel the rash if you touch the skin. It's also less than a centimeter in diameter. A patch is just like a macule, except it's larger. Finally, a vesicle is an accumulation of clear fluid in or just beneath the epidermis and is less than one centimeter. A pustule is very similar in size and location, but has purulent fluid, and a bulla has clear fluid, but is larger than a centimeter. So if you're faced with a patient that you think has a VZV infection, like the patients we've been talking about, there are a few other diseases you should consider with an acute onset of the rash. Herpes simplex virus is in the same family as VZV. The distribution of the rash and the number of lesions will help you distinguish this infection from VZV. HSV typically appears in or around the mouth or on the genitals. It can be all over the body if your patient has an underlying skin disease like eczema and develops a secondary HSV infection of that abnormal skin. The lesions are painful in contrast to being itchy with varicella. Variola virus, or smallpox, also looks like BZV, but the lesions go from vesicular to pustular and occur on the entire body, and the rash is at all the same stage, which is a real critical distinguishing feature. The fact that variola has been eradicated uh, would also put this lower on your differential diagnosis. Enterovirus infection can cause a rash called hand, foot, and mouth disease. The patients will have fever, like the patients with primary varicella, and the rash will have a combination of papules, pustules, and a few vesicles. The distribution of the rash, which is on the hands, feet, mouth, and sometimes the buttocks, will help you distinguish between VZV and enterovirus. Infection with Staph aureus causes an illness named bullous impetigo. However, the fluid-filled lesions are larger than what we see in VZV. The rash isn't typically itchy, and it usually isn't widespread as VZV, just localized to one part of the body. Insect bites can look very similar to VZV and be itchy. Careful observation for the progression of the rash can help distinguish between the two. Often the lesions appear all at once because of the exposure to the insect and don't continue to appear in crops like VZV does. Finally, contact dermatitis, for instance, the allergic reaction to poison ivy, can look very similar to VZV. The rash may also have lesions with different appearances from papules to vesicles and be itchy, but it's not as widespread as varicella, it's not associated with fever, and occurs where the patient came in contact with the plant or the other irritants. So in summary, there are several other causes of blistering rashes that start acutely, so keep these in mind when you're considering the diagnosis of a disease due to varicella.